can we change the world by thinking about water in a different way? An idea came to me when I was flying into Adelaide Airport after attending a conference on urban heat islands. Urban heat islands is best described as the temperature difference that you feel when you leave a hot city, drive through a parklands or a leafy suburb, and it feels cooler. It's actually not the parklands that's cool, it's that the city is unnaturally hot. So I'm sitting on the aeroplane, gaze out the window at the brown, dry airport that I was flying into, being Adelaide Airport. And then I remembered, we've got a recycled water scheme that runs from the wastewater treatment plant right next door to the airport. Then thinking back to the discussions at the conference earlier that day, I thought, I wonder what benefits we could get if we could just put that recycled water onto that dry landscape. Imagine flying into Adelaide Airport as a green oasis, the gateway to our state. The interesting part about this was that I'd flown into Adelaide Airport a hundred times before, and I've known about that recycled water scheme for years because it's part of my day job. But I hadn't put the two together. Something had obviously clicked in my mind from that conference. Isn't it funny how you can look at something a hundred times and not see the obvious? So anyway, I went to our friends at the airport and I said, look, I've got this idea. Imagine if we could make the airport green all year round and maybe we could reduce the air temperature enough that you would actually see a reduction in your energy usage in the cooling towers that cool the airport terminal. They got pretty excited. I was already excited. So we decided to set up a trial. So we established a little trial area um, a few hundred metres south of the runway, set up an irrigation system similar to what you'd see on a typical farm. And we put air temperature sensors around the airport so that we could determine the difference in air temperature between the irrigated and the unirrigated areas. Being an airport site, we had to make sure that we didn't have an impact on airport operations. Safety was paramount. We had to make sure that we didn't influence bird activity, wildlife, or anything else. So we started the trial, irrigating every second or third night, using about the same amount of water that you'd use to keep your backyard green over summer. And we looked at the data, and we found that we were getting about a three degree or more temperature difference between the irrigated and the unirrigated areas on warm days. And that gave us some real encouragement to look into this a bit deeper. And we started to think, what benefits could you get if you actually expanded this to all the areas of the airport where it was safe to do so? We focused on three main areas, being the money side of it, which is pretty important, I've heard. <laughs> the farming side of it, which I'll explain in a minute, and the carbon side of it, which is pretty topical. I should also add that this was a world first trial of its kind, cooling down an airport simply through irrigation. And isn't it great that it happened here in Adelaide? And the information that we've got from that trial could be used in many airports around the world. It can be used in other settings like an urban park or even your own backyard. But that's a story for another time. So everything's going along nicely. Chatting to a pilot friend of mine, and he said, well, three degrees could actually have an impact on the fuel use during takeoff, it could actually reduce the amount of fuel that's used by the aeroplane. My first reaction was, whiskey, tango, foxtrot. We hadn't even thought about that. <laughs> so my second reaction was to engage an aircraft performance specialist to try and dig a bit deeper and find some of these things out. 
they came up with some really interesting aspects, like the fuel reduction that you could get from the aircraft's air conditioning system when it's parked at the terminal gate. The ability to maintain or even increase the payload capacity of the aircraft on hot days. And also things like wear and tear on the tyres and engines. One thing we didn't look at was the impact of flight cancellations. We know that earlier this year in Arizona, 50 flights were cancelled in one day because it was just too hot for the planes to take off. That's a big impact. And we know that as a consequence of climate change, these types of events are going to increase in the future. So imagine if we could avoid that risk by just adding water. Now for the farming side of it. We thought we'd plant lucerne, which is a stock feed loved by cows everywhere. And we did this because we thought, well, I wonder if we could grow something that could actually make us some money instead of just grass. And then we started thinking, well, every major city around the world has an airport. And every airport has a big area of buffer land around the runways. Could we actually turn that buffer land into productive land? Could we actually grow food for livestock, or even for us? We looked at an airport about the size of Adelaide and the irrigation area where it was safe to irrigate, and we thought within that area you could grow enough potatoes to feed 140,000 people per year, or enough rice to feed 40,000 people per year. And with the money that you get from the sale of that produce, you could contribute to or maybe even eliminate the cost of the water that was used to grow those crops and cool the airport. And now for carbon. Most of us have ticked that little box when we're booking our flights to say that we're happy to contribute a cost to um, offsetting our carbon for that flight. But I bet we've thought, I wonder where that carbon is. We trust it exists, but wouldn't it be great if we could see it? Wouldn't it be also great if you could actually encourage the airlines to invest in the sprinklers, the pipes, the pumps, in exchange for the carbon farming credits that could be generated and traded in countries like Australia? The airlines would also get a carbon credit for the fuel reduction related to the cooler air that I talked about earlier. The next stages for this project are to expand it, hopefully, over a wider area of Adelaide Airport and also start the conversation with other airports that are interested in this approach. And hopefully one day soon, I'll be sitting back on that plane eating my potato curry on rice from that airport farm below as I gaze out the window at that green oasis, knowing that because we've thought of water in a different way, we've come up with and demonstrated a way that can help us all adapt to climate change. Now, wouldn't that be cool? Thank you. <laughs>